Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for an object lesson. Now, normally I would ignore these sound bites that I have, but this is going to prove valuable. Because what has happened here, my take on NASA's announcement of the discovery of water on Mars, we cannot move past this yet. It has entered the bloodstream of the low information crowd in this country via late night comedy shows and PBS. And this is going to irritate some of you because you're going to get mad because you love me and you love the program and you hate it when what I say is lied about or distorted or misrepresented. And I do, too. And I love you for getting mad about that. Don't 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 misunderstand. But I think on balance, this has the potential to be to be good uh, because these people, uh, the hosts of these shows, are exposing themselves as the ignoramuses they are. Uh, first, let's go to PBS. Well, actually NPR, but it's all the same. This was last night. They had a guest on, North Carolina businessman Jay Faison. And they were talking about his organization called Clear Path Foundation, which is devoted to convincing conservatives that climate change is real. Oh, may I make a brief departure? I will not lose my place. I promise you. I came across uh, one of my little tech blogs last night, something I thought, this has to be from The Onion. This has to be Scott Ott. This has to be satire. But no, it was real. The headline, to stop climate change, we must genetically engineer human beings. And one of the things, and the people at this tech blog think this is brilliant and wonderful, and they wholly endorse it. This is how deep the corruption of uh, the leftist agenda reaches or how how, le- how deep it sinks this this is evidence of just how uh well, beyond corrupt uh damaging this entire climate change argument happens to be because of what the end result of it's going to be the end result of it is always going to be people ending up supporting massively bigger and bigger government with massively more and more regulations that massively limit more and more freedom and liberty because it's predicated on the fact that human beings in our natural state are destructive. Human beings as created are destroying the planet. The human engineering, one of the things that this story talks about, the human engineering that will be required to save the planet in the future is to genetically alter the human eye so that we can all have as the primary portion of our day nighttime. And and that we will need no light at nighttime, because if we genetically alter our eyes, we'll be able to see at night without lights and save all kinds of electricity and therefore pollute less and therefore not destroy the planet via climate change. And this theory is wholeheartedly supported. It's wholeheartedly endorsed. I mean, this is the kind of abject lunacy that now passes for mainstream in this argument. So... Again, to set this up, NASA announces, coincidentally, uh, timing perfect for a new movie called The Martian. NASA, which wants money to go to Mars, announces that they've discovered flowing water. And it wasn't just that they've discovered flowing water, and I never once said they made that up. But that's what the late-night comedians will say in just a second, as you will hear. My objection... Or my, my point of uh, interest that I raised is that the NASA scientist involved in announcing this said that in addition to the flowing water, they discovered that two-thirds of the northern hemisphere of Mars was once covered by ocean that was a mile deep. And I simply raised what I think is an intelligent question. How do you know? We've not been there. We have not had enough probes to go there to learn anything like this. But it was... More than that, that made me dubious. The announcement contained the following phrase when explaining why the water that was there isn't there anymore on Mars. Why it was a catastrophic event, probably brought on by climate change. How miraculous, how coincidental that we've now discovered catastrophic climate change on Mars that has destroyed an ocean. Now, catastrophic climate change on Earth is going to destroy land. 
because catastrophic climate change here is going to cause ice caps to melt and the sea level is going to rise and we're all going to die because we're all going to drown. On Mars, the exact opposite happened, apparently. A catastrophic climate change, probably brought on by climate change. That's all supposition. It's wild guess. It's bogus. And it's amazing to me how automatically it's believed. This is, folks, I'm not going to stop fighting this stuff. This is common sense perception. And this is the kind of stuff that's going to have to be beaten back if we're going to ever stop this this never-ending expansion of government and government regulation and government law and spending and debt and reduced liberty and freedom. All of it's relevant. It's all the result of this stuff because... What governments essentially are saying is now we've got to genetically alter human beings to be able to see at night without lights. Our natural state, as created by God, destroys our planet. And do you not think it's a little dangerous that young skulls full of mush would kind of sign on to this and believe it? So we have the absolute absence of science being presented as science, it is unquestioned by anybody in the low information comedy world. And when somebody like me comes along with valid, penetrating questions rooted in common sense, that person has to be laughed at, mocked, made fun of, distracted, distorted, what have you, because the little cocoon in which these people have constructed for themselves to live gets blown to smithereens and they can't handle anything contrary to this belief system they've all evolved. So here is NPR. Here is Jim J. Faison, who runs a group called Clear Path Foundation, devoted to convincing you, conservatives, that climate change is real. The host is Robert Siegel. Rush Limbaugh said yesterday, I hope half facetiously, that leftists will manage somehow to work the discovery of water on Mars into their agenda. He said NASA has been corrupted by the current regime. How do you understand the suspicion of science that plays well, at least with some conservative audiences? Well, I think some people have made a good business on riling up the most conservative. I think Rush Limbaugh's built a very successful business, so that's his trade. And I think he's running out of material, frankly. Well, contraire, Mr. Faison, but this is not something I'm riling anybody up about. See, what you people don't understand is that conservatives are not my numb robots wandering aimlessly throughout the country until I came along. All I do is validate what people already believe. It's not as though you had 100% belief, public opinion on climate change, and I came along and blew it up, and now it's 50-50. You've never had it 100-100. 100% zero. But even this is a misstatement. The host here, Rush Limbaugh said yesterday, I hope half facetiously, that the leftists will manage somehow to work the discovery of water on Mars into their. That's not what I said. I didn't say they're going to work the discovery of water into the agenda. What I said was their attempted explanation for even after discovery why it's not there anymore. Catastrophic climate change causes an entire northern hemisphere of mile deep water to vanish. That's what I was questioning. Not the discovery of water. We already know there's water on Mars because Mars has ice caps. I was not disputing that. And everybody, this, this is how it happens. And this is why I'm taking the time to play the bites, to at least correct the record as best I can here. Misquoted, misinterpreted on purpose. It's what you have to understand. This is being done on purpose because actually I'm getting too close to the truth. I mean, in the old days, they used to be able to go out and make these pronouncements. Yes, we just discovered flowing water on Mars. Do you know it used to be two-thirds of it was covered by water a mile deep? But a catastrophic event, probably related to climate change, came along, and it's gone. And everybody go, whoa, wow. And that's what they say is happening here. Oh, my God, we're all going to... And nobody would challenge it. And it become accepted belief, and then they'd make movies about it. I come along and say, wait a minute, this isn't science, this is wild guess, and this is politics. Every bit of this explanation of what happened to the water on Mars is politics. 
And I'm sorry, folks, it's my quest. It has been for 27 years to get people to understand who liberals are and how they operate. Conan O'Brien is next, and here's how he treated it. Not everybody's happy, though, about this. Rush Limbaugh has said, this is real, that the evidence of water on Mars is all part of a leftist agenda. (laughs) That's what Rush Limbaugh said. Limbaugh also said that a hydrogen atom bringing two oxygen atoms together to make water is pretty gay. All right, now everybody knows the last thing is not true. But see, this this is how it is. Now, normally I would ignore these things. What are you frowning at in there, Mr. Snow? Are you... Oh, you didn't know Kona still had a show? Well, most people don't. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> Snurdly, they're mad in there on the other side of the glass. They're livid because of how what I say gets distorted. That's another reason why I'm playing these things. I, again, this, uh, somewhere in the media, probably Media Matters, is this little passage that I have somehow related the announcement of the discovery of water on Mars as a leftist agenda item, which is not at all, it's not even close to what I said. Anyway, and next... Comedy Central, The Nightly Show, Larry Wilmore. Speaking of primitive animals seeking attention, Rush Limbaugh. (laughs) It's true. He has taken something as exciting and fun as finding water on Mars and turned it into something dirty. They're just making up the amount of ice at the North and South Poles. They're making up the temperatures. They're lying and making up false charts and so forth. So what's to stop them from making up something that happened on Mars that will help advance their left-wing agenda on this planet? What? You think NASA made this up? They called a press conference and made this up to further leftist agenda? You know what? Just stop it. That's exactly, Larry. That's exactly what they did. I don't know who he is. He just got to show a comedy. But that, Larry, that's exactly what they did. But it wasn't about the discovery of Mars, Larry. It was the announcement that the water is now gone, probably because a catastrophic event. Maybe, probably, caused by climate change. Larry, get a brain, will you, if you're going to host that show on a... Okay, here's here it is from Media Matters for America. This was posted back on September 28th. After NASA announces it found water on Mars, Rush Limbaugh says it's part of a climate change conspiracy. And that's where NPR and Conan and Wilmore got their material to write the jokes. They didn't check my website. They didn't call to find out if Media Matters got me correct at all. And so they, but you see, the reason they're happy to do it, the reason they're happy to misquote me, folks, is what they're really trying to do is continue the lie that conservatives are anti-science. That is one of the agenda items, in fact, that the left is constantly pushing. And the reality of that is that we are actually opposing phony science. What we are saying, I'll tell, what I'm saying is that there isn't any science in global warming. It's computer models and a so-called consensus of scientists. There is no consensus in science. Science isn't up for a vote. It's all been corrupted for the advancement of the liberal agenda. Climate change, uh, big government requiring and demanding changes in human behavior, control over human behavior. It's all part of the same thing, but there's no science in it. What we're saying here, what I'm saying is, can we have a little science in this debate? Because there isn't any. But they are trying to spread this uh, lie that conservatives, of course, are uh, Cro-Magnon or Neanderthal and that we're anti-science and backwards and so forth. And by the way, that, if you don't know, is rooted in their bias and bigotry against Christianity. They happen to believe that uh, Christians uh, don't believe in science because science conflicts with the Bible and God, and they don't think the two can go together. I mean, the bigotry and the bias that these people exhibit, and in many cases they might not even be aware of it, they're just so... because of the conditions of their lives and their... People they've been uh, influenced by, their liberalism may not even be something they're cognizant of having or being, but it manifests itself in uh, in every which way they describe uh, current events. But I just wanted to play those bites for you to show you how this is done, how it's distorted, uh, and how misinformation, lies, and so forth end up in the bloodstream of the low-information voter 
segment of the population. We've got much more. We're coming back with it right after this, so don't go away. 